Hey everyone, we're back here in the shop. A big goal this month is to wrap up everything firewall forward. So the focus there is on the design refresh for the engine mount and nose gear. So we're gonna talk about that and also touch on the concept of design for manufacturability. So let's jump right in. In our last video about the nose landing gear, we talked about how we changed the actuation system for the nose gear. We went from a linear actuator to a gear drive, and I showed you the CAD model for that. And in that video, I talked about the actuation system a lot, but there are a couple things that I didn't get to cover that I wanna talk about. And those items are specifically the drag links, which are these parts here, our backup extend gas springs, which are these parts here, and then the lock up, lock down mechanism, which is incorporated in this bracket up here. So when you're coming into land and your wheel touches down on the pavement, the wheel has to spin up to speed. That generates a drag load, which tries to take this strut and fold it backwards. The drag links are the component that uh, counteracts that drag force on the strut. So all that force gets reacted and counteracted through these drag links here and those end up folding. They kind of have a scissor mechanism or you could think about this whole assembly as a four bar linkage if you're into that. So they would fold up like this and then the gear goes into the retracted position in flight and locks up like this. Uh, when you go to extend the gear and if you ever had an issue where you had an electrical system failure or the motor that retracts it right here were to fail, we have a backup system. So the way that would work for the pilot or the pilot experience would just be that you pull a simple T-handle in the cockpit that unlocks the gear and disengages the motor from the rest of the gear drivetrain that drives the strut. So the gear would start to fall down under gravity. Gravity naturally wants to pull the gear down like this, but because it's hinging forward, aerodynamic forces start to counteract that gravity load and it would naturally reach an equilibrium position around maybe 45 degrees like this. So we need a little bit of force to help the gear all the way into the down lock position here. That extra force is supplied by two gas springs right here and here. And I actually have uh, those gas springs in hand here. Between the drag links, the gas spring backup and the locking mechanism, that rounds out the rest of the nose gear architecture that I didn't get to cover in the last video. So now that we have this design, we need to manufacture it. It's really cool to have a design, but if it's not manufacturable, it doesn't really mean anything. Manufacturability is something that we've become really passionate about, and it's really important when you're making a uh, kit aircraft that you're gonna try to mass produce. It's relatively easy to make a one-off prototype. It's a whole different story to make a product that's mass producible and also can be assembled by a broad range of customers. The engine mount and nose gear are mostly CNC machined parts. So our trunnion halves here, the engine mount uprights, these arms that support the gear, and the drag links, and the bracket that supports the drag links, those are all CNC machined. And what we try to do is we try to make all these CNC machined parts in-house on our simple three-axis Tormach mill. The idea there is that if we can make these parts on a simple three-axis mill, we have a good shot of mass producing them. Uh, if we need to outsource them, then there's a good shot that a third party can supply them to us. The other advantage of making them in-house is that we can get a really good understanding of any manufacturing challenges that might be generated by the design. So if we have a poor design for manufacturing, uh, we can update that and change that. Really good example would be these torque links. So these torque links are the component here in the strut. Uh, they prevent the lower portion of this from rotating relative to the upper assembly. So it keeps uh, this portion of the strut clocked correctly with the rest of the trunnion. So we made these, they work. Uh, they look kind of cool, but at the end of the day, they were tricky to manufacture. So we updated the design and came up with this new concept for the torque links, which are a lot easier to machine. So what does it mean to be easily machinable or easily manufacturable? Well, when we're CNC machining, we try to minimize the number of setups. 
A setup is any time that you need to fixture the part. So this is a really good example of a two setup or a two operation part. Uh, you start off by fixturing your stock, say in a vise. You come in with your cutting tool or your mill and machine out all the pockets, the different geometry here. And then when you have that complete, you flip it over and refixture it. So reclamp it in your vise or a soft jaw and then deck up the part and add your fillets or any chamfers to complete the part. So this is a really simple part, two operations and really easy to produce on our three axis mill. So we have a number of parts in the gear right now that are good examples of that. The drag links in particular are a two operation part. So you'd start off by cutting out the profile and pocketing the shape in your first operation and then flipping it over, refixturing it and decking off the back side of the part to complete the geometry. The trunnion halves look pretty complicated, but they're actually nearly a two operation part. So you start off by machining the inner bore of this shape and then flipping it over and machining the exterior geometry. The third operation comes into play when we have to drill these holes that come in laterally through the part. So uh, even though these look pretty fancy, they can still be machined on our Tormach mill. Uh, we have a special fixture that we use to machine these out and hold the stock when we're machining it. And we had to do an update to that fixture. So Keegan's gonna talk you through that. We're over at the CNC mill. I just finished up making some modifications to our fixture plate. So this isn't a part for the aircraft. This is actually a part that we machined out that's used to hold a part of the aircraft. So a fixture plate is something that aids in the machining process. It helps us hold the stock in position while we're machining stuff out. So I have it pulled up on the screen here on what that looks like. So we've got our fixture plate right here, which I was just showing you on the mill. And then we have our trunnion half, which is our actual aircraft component and we have a front half and an aft half that's used for the nose gear assembly. The reason we like to highlight this part in particular is because surface level it looks like a very complicated part to manufacture but it's in fact pretty straightforward. We make it on this entry level CNC machine. When we get into a production setting and choose to either do this in-house or outsource it you're going to go with more capable production ready CNC machines that have even more power feeds and speeds and more automation for tool changes. And these types of parts become even easier and more manufacturable. So really just scratching the surface when it comes to manufacturability, we've only really covered it in the realm of making these metal components firewall forward, but there's a whole other spectrum when it comes to making composite parts, whether you do wet layup or infusion or prepreg, and we want to save that for another video. In addition to that, there's also the manufacturability to consider on the kit builder's end. So how do you design a kit so that the average Joe can put the thing together? And that's also a separate video. The scope creep on this would be a little bit too much if we tried to cover it right here. So thank you guys for watching. We're gonna wrap it up right there and we'll catch you in the next video.